Welcome, everyone, to another episode of the Adeptus Ridiculous Podcast. My name is DK Diamantes. My co-host is Bricky. He will be filling us in on some really weird Warhammer 40k stuff. But before he does... If you enjoyed today's episode, head on over to the Patreon. Consider supporting us at patreon.com slash ridiculous, where you can get access to the Discord, uh, bloopers if they happen, uh, HD posters. Uh, I think the one right now is still a uh, female Karn with the just yoked abs. It's fantastic. Consider it at the $15 tier. We also have a Patreon goal. When we hit 17000 on the Patreon, uh, we will be delving into a fan theory that everybody wants us to talk about, the Dornian heresy. So, patreon.com slash Ridiculous if you want that to happen. And now Bricky will tell you a bunch of stuff. I, li I like a bunch of stuff. I'm, I'm mm. so good at bunches of stuff. Um, mm. If you want to check out the merch, it's over at Orchidate.com. Check out the description. We also have some new merch. Two things to discuss. We are actually selling physical versions of the Karn poster. We have like eight left as Ooh. of recording this video. Um, so we're almost out, but if there's any left by the time this video is up, go and check it out. Also, this is a kind of a side thing. Um, if you go to the merch site over at Orchidate.com, link in the description, you will find a tab on the top that says Pile of Shame. Um, it's kind of a new thing we're trying out. You know, it, okay. it works out. It works out time timely with that. Um, it's a new thing we're kind of trying out. When we print all the shirts on the printer, you know, we do our absolute best to make sure it's all you know, it's all it's all quality, as they say. Um, and if we see any like marks or scuffs, we don't sell them. However, sometimes we'll like the scuff will be really small, and we still won't want to sell it. But some people like don't really care about like a single discolored piece of the ink. So the pile of shame is a whole bunch of the various ones that were just a little off and they're 50% off. And um, it's like, if you go there, you can see they have pictures of what's wrong with it and the size of the product. And it's all half off. It stays half off. Um, there are no refunds. So, cause it's, cause that kind of stuff. But if you're like, hey, I really don't care about a slight discoloration in one of the ink blops or something, whatever. And this is in my size. You can get it for half off and then uh, bada bing. So check that out. It's kind of a, obviously there's only one per product because it's per thing, but you know, it's an yeah. idea. I oh, thought it was pretty cool. Just slight imperfections. Yeah. And you know, some of them are more than others, but it depends on how much you care. Some people I know just want to, they just like having the merch to rep it as opposed to like having a, perfectly crystal clear clear thing sure um that's so, a great idea I, that's good calling it the pile of shame is 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 I, I i thought that quality. was i thought that was a good idea yeah hell yeah um anyway uh, also check out collectible squids they are in the dis uh, description as well they have a special discount if you use code adric they sell warhammer stuff and they have a flat shipping anywhere in the u.s and they also have little sections where they put products on the topics we talk about so you can get some Warhammer for cheaper there. And last but not least, Book Club. We have Dang. the first Heretic, which uh, we will be recording and releasing the episode for next week. Um, mm -hmm. I, you know, you know, you know how when we, we when we were talking about it and we were like, "Hey, Monarchia Pizza Palace." Oh no, it burned down my Monarchia. <laughs> yeah, it's and then, a little more depressing than that. Like one of the first like five chapters of the book they just they burn down monarchia i'm like wow this sucks yeah it's off to uh it's off to a start all right it's uh whew, but we'll talk about that next week we don't, we don't wanna you know i can't fucking believe shy made me feel bad for lorgar <laughs> well shy didn't it was the first heretic that did you're right it was legendary author aaron dembski baladin yes, recommended exactly by shy because shy likes lorgar uh no, nah, see this is the book. Shy had nothing to do with this. Don't don't give her credit. Uh, yeah, <laughs> the ego's true. big enough as it is. We don't. And it's the cherub in the background, so the head is like really big. <laughs> it just mega mind cherub in the back. Yeah. Oh shit! What's wrong? No lore. <laughs> no lore. No, no lore. No cherubs. No lore. Gar. <laughs> God damn it, that was so, that was, that was so easy. Why did I think <laughs> so of that? so easy, yeah. How'd you miss that? You're too What's quick to the you, punch. Man? 
<laughs> no Lorgar? No Lorgar? Where uh, is he? <laughs> where'd he go? He's taking he a pilgrim. He's taking a pilgrim. Lorgar! <laughs> oh, fuck Lorgar. <laughs> yeah, get on with it, Bricky. Fuck Erebus. Anyway. Uh, agreed. Agreed. Anyway, uh, so today we have a bit of a different episode. Um, there is not really a quote I can give you that you would, you would, you would, you just won't get it. guess this one. Nice. You, I don't have to look won't. too stupid today. Good. I'm, pr I'm so proud of you th for the things that I've done to help you. Yeah. Hell, hell, hell yeah, brother. Hell yeah, brother. Hell yeah, um, brother. Yeah. So no quote because you'll, you'll never get it for one. <laughs> um, and also because it's a bit of a side weirdo concept. Because around here, we are side and weirdos. We are going to talk about everlasting life and heaven. Uh, wait, really? No. <laughs> okay, I was going to be like, wait, what? This is 40k, right? What the fuck? What the fu <laughs> Your soul doesn't go anyplace happy when you die in 40k? What the what the Well, what? that's the question. Today, we are talking about the soul, okay? Okay. Actually, we are. We're talking about souls in 40k. Like, okay. What oh, is where they where they go? And I, I thought they all just siphoned off into the warp. Well, it depends on what race you are. Um, that sounded racist. It depends on what faction you are. <laughs> <laughs> to clarify, faction. To, 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 to clarify, what faction. The green skins is not a. Well, that's not much. Of, wow. That's not great either, man. That's Grab not. That's cool. not really good. Wow. Real good start. We're we're doing <laughs> we're doing solid today. All right. It, it depends on on what. It depends on who you are. Mm -hmm. um, no, yeah, I mean, legitimately, yeah. It depends on what race you are. Um, yeah. Orcs, Eldar, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, and also, not just that, but they're also we're, we're getting into speculative territory here a little bit. We're getting into some things that aren't one hundred percent considered canon. Because we're going to talk about the old ones a little bit, and some of the old one lore is just kind of out there, and and. and kind of like here and there and everywhere and some of it's been adjusted and some of it hasn't been and eh. right i totally forgot about the old ones yeah because the old one lore to me is kind of kind of shit uh not that it's like <laughs> it's kind of it's not as terrible it's just when you have to create like originally the gods that made everybody it, it just sounds kind of like a cop-out oh yeah yeah yeah. it's Definitely. a little annoying it also kind of feels like less justice of, of a character like, i don't know humans are and it's like, oh, where did humans come from? Or, or where did Eldar and orcs come from? And it's like, well, space frogs made them to fight the scary robots. <laughs> yeah, that does sound like a cop out. That yeah, it's not very fun. interesting at all. Yeah. And it makes the Necrons seem cooler because they are the coolest. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So, Necron supremacy. Necron supremacy. So talking about the soul means we got to talk a bit more about the warp. And the warp is... If we if we're remembering the warp in its own right, because in a sense, 40k is taking place in the year 40,000, but our time frame here in the 21st century, it did happen. Like, oh yeah, yeah. You know, like it just happened. It was normal, which means to if you take it like look at us, let's say just you, me, whatever shy is considered. Um, etc. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever she is considered, probably not human, but eh, it's fine. Whatever she is. I don't know. I'm gonna find a pipe bomb in my mailbox one day. Yeah, she's um, human adjacent. It's fine. Human adjacent. Human adjacent. Lobotomized. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and, uh, so anyway, there there is the warp now. Is the assumption that for us there is a warp, mm -hmm. uh, but because we do not have psychers and we do not have any of that kind of stuff and we don't know how to tap into it, we are not necessarily a affected by it but uh there are possible explanations for it here there and everywhere so i don't believe in ghosts other people do believe in ghosts um the assumption is that those that do believe in ghosts the ghosts are in fact real they were just warp entities perhaps or an echo of the immaterium the uh. shamans of old past we're like okay. proto psychers, but not really, you know. Okay, okay, like, okay. Like, like some religions are right, some religions are wrong, but some are as are more powerful than others. Yada yada yada. You can explain the world nowadays as if you were explaining the warp. So okay. that's kind of cool. It's an interesting concept. Yeah. 
So, um, though it doesn't quite match with the timeline of 40k, um, because it's assumed in some timelines of 40k, corn was made during the Middle Ages because of the blood and death during oh, the Middle Ages. Right, of course, and, and the Crusades and the mass murder and the right religious zealotry on a whole new level. <clears throat> but at the same time... It also was there's also the assumption that corn and the original chaos gods were made during the war in heaven, which was 60 million years ago, because that was during all the massive bloodshed and murder yeah, yeah. and yada yada. So, <laughs> and there's some differing accounts. I'm not 100% sure which is which, and honestly, I kind of don't care because uh, it's not the point, sure, but um. The idea is that way back when, during the old one time, the immaterium and the warp was very like calm. So it, it was it was very just kind of it was there. It, it was the okay. second skin. It will it was the immaterium to the to the materium, the yin and the yang, much smaller. But it it was a a sea of energy, a sea of of gestalt energy and, and life and all that stuff. And it was just it was like a calm a calm sea. Because the warp okay. is a sea. Yeah, it's yeah. The sea of souls, you know? Sea of souls. It's, tr it's treated as a sea, not mm. only figuratively, but sometimes literally, where waves of psychic power will crash onto you. Mm. We've seen this <clears throat> uh, in the Night Lords books. Um, yeah. How Octavia travels and the like. Sure, sure. So the sea was calm for a while. Uh, and then the Catan who do not have a power in the warp, uh, but fe feasted on the souls of the Necrons regardless instead of stars. And then you had the big war with the old ones, and then the old ones created a whole bunch of races that could tap into the warp. It is assumed that some of the proto psyker humans were first, I mean, we weren't alive as humans 60 million years ago. No, but, no we weren't. But it's 40k let's not let's not take it too seriously yeah yeah don't think too hard about it it's just just go with it my brain is gonna fizzle out and, and shy's cherub wings will like zap <laughs> and then she'll like dive of... she'll like dive bomb <laughs> a lot of shy a lot of shy heavy uh, uh commentary this time I'm sure she's some... very i'm sure she's thrilled about that hey you know the more shy bullying i do the more shy the more shy adjusts the 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 episode with random shit she turned me into a fucking short stack goblin. Wait, what the fuck? She sure did. A well endowed short stack goblin too. I don't. Like, I don't care how endowed I am. She, as much short stack goblin. She, she gave you some bazonga songs, dude. Some. There's a new high school plot, right? This girl comes in with these like these massive honkers. <laughs> I mean, a real set of badonkers. <laughs> what? <laughs> some dobon honkeroos. Uh, that time I got Isekai as a short stack goblin with giant bazongas. I don't like I don't like the the Adeptus Ridiculous lore we have created. Anyway, <laughs> so um, it was pretty normal, but with the creation of very psychically entuned races such as the Eldar and the Orcs and the Old Ones own, I'm assuming they had psychic ability and the to fight off the Necrons, that disturbed the immaterium heavily not only because there's a lot mm. of people reaching out into it to do stuff with it but also because of the sheer volume of death murder and destruction that occur in the war of he in heaven that makes oh, yeah. all the wars of 40k feel like chump change oh god yeah i i gotta believe the biggest war in history uh with all the death and all of the raw emotions uh that yeah that would probably make the warp go a little wacky crazy and wacky crazy it went so <laughs> that was the turbulent tide going on um so that's the idea of why the warp got problematic because the warp for the most part nowadays is known as hell you know it's it's hell oh yeah fair but enough because that's where chaos resides that's where chaos resides but at the same time it's not just chaos there are also other creatures that roam the warp so there are the multiple realms of chaos, all four realms, but then there are also other crazy things that go around the warp. Like there's um like enslavers are one of the things that they have down there. Ooh, um, that's no good. 
Yes, enslavers are very creepy looking. Uh, but they've also got a bunch of other little things. It's imagining imagining like you're in you're in big the, the high seas as I yard your pirates and you're you're going down stealing your your churches and burning your women. And okay. in, in, in that order. In and that specific order, huh? Steal the church, then burn the women. Burn the women. Yarg. Poor women just can't catch a break. They Any cannot. Period, can they? Jesus. So, so you're you're out there. You're burning the stakes, and 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 you're tying people to masts, all that. The and the chaos gods are the big pirates. They're the ones mm -hmm. with the big fleets going around, ready to plunder and take. And the moment that you die, you are thrown into the water of the seas. And ready for one of them to find you. But despite them being the big bads, there are also sharks in the water. And the oh sharks boy. in the and the sharks in the water are the enslavers. They're all the other various warp entities that are just around. Okay. That's, so, that's yeah, that's a that's a turbulent sea, that is. So the warp back in the day was peacetime. Now the warp nowadays is pirate time pirate time honor. and he's gonna get your booty cut off and mounted on his fireplace oh which is a spongebob reference that you don't get no, pff, yeah because you know i'm not a child i am offended <laughs> that was that was kind of the point i don't know if you noticed the the way i said it i uh, can't see you i don't know how you said it yeah, but I mean, if I say if, if I say yeah, because I'm not a child, it's, it's a very condescending tone. You can kind of pick up the air of, you know, it's tr I'm trying to be insulting. Just continue D with the episode. DK, you idiot! You can't pick up air. It's air. <sighs> like that, you just, you it's hailed air, but you can't pick it. <laughs> try try grabbing it. I'll try it right now. <sighs> Oh, it's not wait. working, DK. Did, it's not did, working. Did, yeah, maybe maybe you should try uh, getting it in a bottle or something, huh? Maybe you should try getting some bitches. Maybe you should try continuing the episode, you degenerate filth. People are not here for the episode, thank you very much. You know, that's probably fair. They're probably here for the wacky shenanigans. Me saying little guy, you saying good you know, stuff. I don't know. I mean, the reason you can't pick up air is because the atoms are so far away from each other, you know, and, you know, it's, it's obviously very light, and, and you could say that in reality an air molecule is just Bricky, a little guy. Bricky, you can't trust atoms. They make up everything. You are at, you are and shy are the same people. You both take a high road to try to pretend like you you know what you're doing, and you fucking little guys just immediately jump on the meme. <laughs> what? I'm saying man. Can't oh my good them. god. Anywho, anywho. So, uh, so the soul, right? So we go back. Every soul. Therefore, after the old ones died, uh, uh, Necron's sleep, we all know that. Um, the, a soul has an effect on the warp. So I, I've made a whole shitload of analogies for this that may or may not be accurate, but I think they work, so we're going to use them anyway. Right. Um, so a soul is like a light. It, it, it is a light in the seas. Um, okay. The more psyker heavy you are, the brighter the light. The, the more, the more stronger you are of, of will of mind. Because a soul and consciousness are two different things in the 40k world. Which is the okay. same reason why Necrons can have consciousness, but, but not souls. souls. Right, yeah. right. Because they are, they are soulless. Which is why they have no effect on the warp whatsoever because the necron or the, the katan ate them all right uh however which begs the question of if the uh katan are like big bright lights in the warp um but they're also currently uh fucking um like made as pokemon so i'm not sure yeah regardless though the necrons have no soul but I do believe like a soul and a consciousness are two different things technically. So your soul burns bright, sometimes in a literal sense, depending on how strong will of mind you are and how psychically 
attuned you are. Hmm. So, uh, it, yeah, they act they act like a light, and a soul light is a has varying degrees of strength. So when I okay when I look at say utilizing the warp, like let's say a psyker, mm-hmm. I take a look at the <clears throat> sea. The, the sea that we discussed already with yeah, with yeah. Pi- pirate ship slanesh and, and booty grabbing Nurgle. Actually, it would be booty grabbing slanesh. I was going to say slanesh should be grabbing that ass. And and, and the the rotting um, zombie crew of Nurgle mm. and and Captain Redbeard soaked with the blood of a million men, corn, and and then and then the Zinch is a submarine. Fuck it. Um, <laughs> and everything's changing. Yeah, you know, why the hell not? Sure. Um, so, with that all, if you want to utilize the warp and the turbulent tides, what I imagine is that you are taking... You you are making a hole. You are sticking a straw into the fucking sea from underneath. Oh. So, if you're a psyker, you're opening a hole into the warp, right? With a vacuum. Yeah, yeah. And you stick it in there. And, and right beneath, and, and then because when you stick a, a, um, a straw underneath like a body of water, it'll, it'll start to go down just from gravity, right? Obviously. Water sure, will go sure. through. Sure, sure. Now, in order to increase the amount of power, that straw needs to either become thicker or you got to suck harder. <laughs> DK, you got to suck harder, all right? I know which one Bricky's picking. Hell yeah, brother. Hell yeah, brother. So... This straw emanates your light, because your soul, you know? Sure. Yeah, yeah. However, because of this, demons, among other warp entities, will see this light mm-hmm. and this hole in their sea. So they're gonna they make their way over, because they're like, oh shit, they're drawn to the light like What's moths that? to yeah. a flame, you know? Mm-hmm. Mothman. Um, and when they get to the hole. They will try to claw it open. So the, or they'll try to get through the hole, right? Mm-hmm. So the demon might not be able to get through a straw-sized hole very easily at all. Um, they might try to put their fingers in the hole and try to rip it open to, to be <laughs> able to push themselves through. But sure. it, it's tough. It's only it's a straw-sized hole. Like how do you how do you open yeah, that? Yeah, you can't you can't do it. Yeah, it's really difficult. So in order to get more power from the warp, you need to get more water. You need to increase the size of the hole or suck harder. Yeah, yeah. Inexperienced psychers, human psychers, uh, navigators, people who are like like primary psychers that are in guards and regiments, people who are not that in tuned, will do not have the power. They do not have the sucking strength. They oh. are not. They're not good enough at it. So they have to open the hole. So they make a bigger hole, and then demons and shit can start filtering through and then all the trouble starts there's they are open themselves up a lot more to problems right very Ooh. powerful psychers such as space marines might have a hole the size of a pinprick but they can suck like Real incredibly hard. fucking hard yeah yeah and so oh, okay. it makes it so that demons and the like can you know you the hole stays through. small but the power is high Good for them. Good for them. I it, it is it, <laughs> shy and, and shy verbatim. Your suck based warp theory is fascinating, Bricky. Thank you. That arguably is I, I can name five times I've been complimented by shy, and this is one of them. Yeah, for your suck based warp theory. I, I think truly. it's not. I think it's a decent metaphor. I yeah, mean, yeah, sure. From it's how much I know, you suck. Yeah, you know. The more sucking power you have, the smaller a hole there can be, you know. Yeah, you I know, the, 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 the light becomes larger if you have a bigger hole and that attracts more demons and scary things. Of course, and, of course. So there's and a big a, hole at the bottom of our sea. Let's go check it out. Yeah, and, and you know, smaller demons won't be able to do much to the, to the little straw hole, but like, you know, a giant, let's say, demon prince or, a, or like a lord of change might see that hole and be like, oh, I can easily exploit this because I'm a fucker. <laughs> and there's I'm one fucker. thing, yeah, a, keep, a Sonesh Keeper of Secrets, if there's one thing, no, if there's two things the Keeper of Secrets can understand, it is holes and sucking. Wow. 
Alrighty then. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Sure. I'm on a roll today, man. I'm. Yeah, I you. Am you are. You are schmoving, and and you are. Wow. This is this is some. Uh, this this is a, this is the quality content that I think our listeners uh, arrive for, and they show we, up for. You really, you know. Oh yeah, like horse horseshoe theory, you know about the political spectrum. Nothing. Warp okay. based suck based warp theory, based. Or, or also known as as the the whole suck theory. Whole suck warp theory, HSW. Based. Yep. Uh, we, we need important. we need that. Uh, what is it? What is it? Is it, is it? is it the Drake meme? Where like uh, he's he's shying away from the uh, the political oh. horseshoe theory. He's giving you the he's giving you the thumbs up for the whole based warp theory. Whole based warp theory. Suck based whole warp theory. Yeah. Analogies, <laughs> man. They may not always be perfect, but they help new people understand. And isn't that what? What's our logo again? What's our motto? Entertainment over accuracy. Let's Hell go. Yeah. Good job. Also, something involving little guys, which has taken off for no reason. Yeah, for no no discernible reason. I can't believe we're back on the little guy discussion. Speaking of little guys, let's talk about elves. Eldar, let's go. Your favorites. Eldar, they're not that bad. I just hated fighting them, and they're That's also fair. pricks. But most That's people are fair. pricks. Necrons are so much bigger assholes, probably. But they're funny I about know. it, so it's okay. The Eldar <laughs> I are like back when they were uh, when they were super meta and just crushing everyone. You probably didn't. The, the, don't the, have those good days were of worse. Them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, also, Eldar are you know because Eldar are like. Oh, oh, you, you, uh, you little guy, Monkai, you little, little Monkai, <laughs> you, you, you disrespect the Oathway craft. The Necrons are like, you, you will die as you've, as you've lived, forgotten and boring. And I'm like, I like Necrons more. Now all I can imagine are the Eldar looking at humanity and going, wow, why are we so scared of them? They're just little Monkai. Little Monkai. He's just a little Monkai. It's just a little Monkai. And then it's they and then they monkai. and then they laugh and they're fucking elder like <laughs> fucking <laughs> piece of shit ass laugh. I do imagine them having the uh, the sort of anime princess Ojo Sama laugh the <laughs> that laugh. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. Wow, that was a string of words you just said right there. Anime princess yeah. Ho Hojo Ho Ojo Sama. You know the hoity toity. <laughs> Oh, is that when they kind of like turn their heads up, put their hand yeah, over their mouth the all hand, flat? Yeah, yep, like, that's the one. Ah, that's the one. Oh, yeah. So, going to death. Uh, so, what do you happens when you go to die? So, the Eldar. <laughs> nothing good. <laughs> nothing good. Um, though the Eldar have three, because they're, well, four technically, because there's Craft Worlds, Drukhari, Yanari, and Harlequins. So, for the Craft Worlds, if they die normally, Slanesh is just like, oh! And then <laughs> snatches Yoink. up them, and then and then yeah, goes. Yeah. Nom, nom, nom. What's that image it's of that dude eating the frog? Eating the frog? I I. Uh, it I, was some. It was some cartoon. It was like Cloud with a Chance of Meatball or something like that. He just like great. He like grabs and he goes like munching. I don't know. There's a version of the uh, little guy. Um, I've never seen Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs. It's it's fine. Don't worry about it. Um, yeah. We're already we're already too off the rails. So yes, the, um, the Eldar, um, um, yes, yes, yes. the the souls will go to the Slanesh. So they counteract this by making soul stones, which are yep. these little you know, little beads. Which once they die, they will enter the soul stone instead. Um, kind of like putting a glass of water next to the onions when you cut onions. Oh, is that really a thing? I didn't know that. Yeah, the the onion fumes, I believe, seek out um the closest like water source, which is why it's your eyes. Oh. Um. Oh, okay. I, yeah, I, I, I was not aware that that was a, a, a kitchen hack. Yeah, cool. you put a glass of water next to uh, next to your onions, and then they, it doesn't get your eyes as bad. I'll have to remember that the next time I'm chopping onions. Unless I'm... Unless Sick I'm tip, Rick. I, this could be a myth, though. This could totally be placebo. I don't know. Oh, Or you could just wear goggles, but you'd probably look like a bit of a numpty wearing goggles in the kitchen. Did you just say the word numpty? I sure as shit did, dude. Oh, wow. All right. So um, now when they go in the soul stones, generally the soul stones are then transported into the craft world itself or something called an infinity matrix. Mm -hmm. Or there's also a shrine they can do on a on an Eldar maiden world that allows them to kind of act as this gestalt consciousness together. Um, I think, and Shai can correct me on this one if I'm wrong. Um, I think they also have, Shai, do they use soul stones and stuff to like pilot wraith constructs? Yeah, there, why, was, there was one where, like, uh, it, what, yeah, it had okay. to be, like, your brother in a soul stone or something. 
I think Wraith Knights are supposed to be like a sibling group yeah, or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I remember that from the Elder episode and being like, wow, that's really fucked up that you have to have your dead brother or your dead sibling soul stone in order to pilot this thing. And it's like, oh, it's so sad. Yeah, most of the mechas are powered with soul stones. That's right. Um, and then if, if they're not in there, they're current. They're all together helping uh, feed and assist the craft world itself. Um, now, so their technology requires them to die. Not quite. Um, that's just that particular type of technology. It allows them to still be of use and still fight and win wars. Because let's not forget oh. that the Eldar society is pretty weak. That's um, true. Like, so, like numbers-wise, that is. So kind of sort of like how Dreadnoughts can still serve even in death. It's like, so too can the Soul Stone still have purpose even after they're gone. Yeah, except instead it's just your soul inside a little gem, whereas um, the Dreadnought is a disfigured, dismembered, dying marine in like a pool yeah. of, of like, like an amniotic fluid who's like, I am going to kill you. Um, yeah. Now, Drukari, of course, they uh, have a little pinky finger on their soul by Slanesh. Uh, and in order, and I'd say if we're going whole theory, well, there's not much whole theory <laughs> in this one because the Dark Eldar don't utilize psychers. Um, yeah. Because that is that is a one-way ticket to the grave, oh, to a yeah. horrible life of, of death. Yeah. Um, which is why they reanimate themselves very often using homunculi. So if they die, often they are cloned by, like, they give, like, a homunculi, like, their finger or something, right? Mm. And then they're, they're, they're vat regrown to keep their soul. Yeah. Um, which is why the homunculi are fat with power and money, because everyone needs them. Yep, and the homunculi are the ones that do all the crazy genetic modifications to make you stronger too, right? Flesh crafters. Yeah. Yeah. And they're also um, like horrible torturers and... Ugh. Yeah, they're the fun type. Uh, uh, but is it, is it the Drukari that... Uh, no, no, it's it's the Harlequins that could potentially be saved by Kekarak, right? Yeah, that... <laughs> Kekarak. Oh no, Kekarak! I was thinking of the emo. <laughs> yeah, the emo is Kekarak, <laughs> which, is a, which is a great <laughs> option, by the way. It's yeah, very absolutely. good, but yeah. Um, no, so uh, the Jukari are the ones that, if, if we're going whole theory, which isn't quite applicable here, but if we're going whole theory, they're blowing bubbles. Oh, okay. You know, by doing all their hedonistic, horrible shit, Slanesh is kind of like satiated. So to speak, it doesn't necessarily yeah. care as much, um, which, which is eh, we'll get to that later. Actually, I'll, I'll table that for now. Um, the Harlequins, yes, uh, Kegarak tends to trick and or fuck around with the um, uh, fuck around with Slanesh in order to bargain, steal, or or trick Slanesh to get their souls back mm -hmm. um, because okay. he's a little clown asshole. <laughs> And the Yanari are still kind of figuring this one out, but they have that like cycle of death and rebirth and the attempt to like have an avatar of the Yanid and, and the Yincarn and they got all that weird stuff going on with the uh, with the attempt that, you know, death is fine because dying means you could be rebirths in this new way instead of having your soul leave and they're figuring out their own deal. Cool. Good I, I guess that's a good deal. Yeah, if you can if you can rebirth, yeah, that's always good. They're the critical thinkers of the Eldar right now. Good for them. So, moving from there, I, I want to discuss a tad bit about the Chaos Gods and the like. And something to be noted, the Chaos Gods, as far as we're aware, need the Materium to survive. So, okay. the Chaos Gods are playing something known as the Great Game. And the Great Game is basically fuck up your neighbor. Of course, you want to be the the most powerful and the one true chaos god. Sure, sure. Yeah. Fuck up the other ones. All right. So Korn tries to fuck up Zinch, and Zinch tries to fuck up Nurgle, and Nurgle tries to fuck up Zinch, and and Slanesh tries to fuck up Slanesh. Who knows? Um, you know, they're just they're you know they're they self flagellation is a, is a common thing, I guess. Yeah. Are um, any of them in? I don't I don't want to say. Are any of them in the lead? Of actually, like, fucking the other ones over? Like, is there actually, like, a most powerful chaos god that... I think it's assumed that the weakest at the moment is Slanesh because of their newer arrival. Ah, and I, baby. I think the most powerful might be Nurgle. Yeah, I can um, see that. But the percentages aren't high. Yeah, they're still pretty close in overall 
power. Yeah, and and they might be better for a bit, but then like you know things shift, and so often you know if Slanesh becomes the most powerful for a bit, then the other three gods are gonna be like, let's team up and fuck them up because fuck her, Fair. or or he or whatever, yeah. um, whatever the hell we. I mean, none of them have a have a associated gender, but you know we assume. Yeah. Um, I guess and, it also kind of depends on the state of the universe at the time too, because if it's like super hedonistic war where there's a lot of people dying and suffering in a very specific way then it's like oh yeah corn is gonna be like supercharged for a little bit but once that war subsides he's gonna kind of slip back down as the others catch up i guess i also i, I think nurgle will is always a little bit in the lead um maybe not always but just because the thing is is that nurgle is is death rot decay which mm. disease and death in general are a lot more widespread than murder. Yeah. I mean, corruption and greed is pretty bad, too. But, like, yeah. there's a lot Everybody of murder out there. Sick. Everybody dies. Like, that, yeah. that's, that's universal. Like Also, pleading for a sickness like cancer to go away feeds Nurgle. There's a lot of that. Oh, yeah, especially in 40K. Yes, sir. So... Uh, despite that, it's generally assumed that even though the Chaos Gods don't really look over into the material realm very much, they kind of need us. Humanity, so, so I'm guilty of this, but we give Eldar a lot of shit for murder fucking a god into existence. <laughs> yes, we do. But uh, humanity is probably Chaos's number one source of power. Oh, absolutely. I would, I would absolutely agree with that. Yeah, especially they, with also how corruptible we are. So not only are they feeding off of us, they can also corrupt us and make us into like uh, their their servants too, very easily. Unless you're like a fucking uh, sister. Yeah, and sure. you know, yeah. a million worlds. A million worlds. <laughs> Anywho, um, yeah. So humanity feeds is a massive part of the chaos problem. Oh yeah. And the, them feeding into the chaos gods, you know, that, that's a that's a big part of it. And the chaos gods may or may not know that they need us, so to speak. But really, they, yeah, I mean, they they may. I mean, they try to kill us quite a lot. Sure. Um, but they may or may not like. They don't even know, they don't know, or they may just not care, because hmm. they are chaos gods, you know. Um, though it's important to note that because a soul. And it's varying effects of the soul and the power it's gained does have a genuine effect on the warp. It's why things like sisters can, through sheer will, stop problems. You know, it's why they can create miracles. It's why they're so right. apt at fighting demons because they're so pure of will. It's why the Grey Knights, despite them all being psychers, are more powerful than the average psyker because they're so strong. And it, it does make a point to where perhaps the only reason Big E is not dead on that throne is because of the shocking amount of worship he is currently getting. You sure? Sure. Um, there is, there's the popular theory that he's the, he's the chaos god of fate though. Huh? It, it, there's the, the theory, theory, the possibility that the, uh, that the warp is hell but the dimensions of the warp, the realms of chaos that are actual realms, are hell, which has just gotten really big, but that there is indeed a heaven. And the heaven is believing in the emperor, which takes many um, si uh, similarities to real life. Sure. Um, but that his domain, the emperor's domain, like how there are realms of chaos, there is the Emperor's domain of the warp, and you go there if you believe. Very much like accepting God into your life, that kind of thing. Hmm. So if you believe hard enough in the Emperor, when you die, will you go to his little uh, subsection of the warp? It is a theory, and it is most likely what the Inquisitors and the like probably believe. Because ah. for the the average man, they they know of like, they kind of know that there's the dark, there's those like bad gods or something. Sometimes they don't actually. Sometimes the average citizen doesn't even know about demons. Um, but for like for some people, probably of the military branch and maybe the imperial guard, they know. Oh yeah, 
all right, you can, you know, that we'll go to heaven if we believe in the emperor, which probably isn't true. Ah, so it's, it's an X X Files situation where I want to believe. I mean, at the same time, it's also also nice reference. Uh, it's also probably one of those situations where you just <sighs> if you want to make it the grim dark world that you want to make it. Having your soul immediately go to the warp and be ripped apart by demons, like most people, is probably what'll happen. Yeah. 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 Um, you you fully believed, like, oh yes, I'm you know, I've 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 been in servitude to the Emperor all this time. Now my soul will go and be saved by him. And then just get ripped apart and sent to like fucking Nurgle, and you're just in a jar for all eternity. I like how we're canonically Nurgle, he's just he's in the jar. Yeah. Who's, got, what, what's the Eldar chick in the jar's name again? Uh, Isha, goddess Isha. of like the uh, harvest or like bountiful harvest, right, something like that. Right, right. I was like, yeah. it's not Yvrain, but it sounds kind of like it. Yeah, got it. Um, but yeah, I, like the afterlife, I think maybe was a a somewhat afterlife, like like a middle ground where it was um the calm seas of the old ones. It sure. was the calm ocean. Which was more of like a not hell but not heaven. One could argue that if there's enough good in the universe that you can create a heaven because that's just the way the immaterium works. It feeds off emotion and, and thought. Mm. Um, but this is the grim darkness of the far future. Yeah, fair. Which um, also leads into oh, were you gonna say something? Oh, uh, I, I I don't know if I'm jumping the gun ever so slightly here uh, because you're probably about the segue into it uh how did how do the orcs feel about afterlifey weird stuff because they're just uh they're just fungus among us we share a brain cell i was about to go into orcs let's go um, hell yeah one brain cell so between the, two people <laughs> yeah we share the ones rattling around yep um well so that was the thing is that often enough belief in a god might make it manifest as an option but some, like, like if you were to believe in, in, say, your own deity, the flying spaghetti monster, and let's, <laughs> let's, let's say you got, like, an entire country to believe in the flying spaghetti monster. Um, in the world of 40k, you would need more than a country, but let's just say for, for this. Yeah. The flying spaghetti monster would most likely become reality in, like, a primordial form in the warp. But with your, as your faith would wane and kind of, you know, here and there, it would probably just, it would be there for a little bit, like, like the rough draft of a painting, and then it would probably fizzle out. Um, now, other things, other gods can be created and become quite strong by this. You had the, the Eldar goddess of Isha. That's very much believed in. Or the avatar, or uh, the god Cain, which has the model, the avatar of Cain. Mm -hmm. Which is a very sick model. And the best example of it, by far, is Gork and Mork. Mm. Because every orc believes, believes in Gork and Mork. Yeah. And Gork and Mork are very real, <laughs> as they have the entire orc populace believing in both of them. And the orc populace is fucking massive. Yeah, it is. It is. So Gork and Mork were literally just believed into existence because the orcs, that was sort of the orc religion. And since this absolute horde of orcs all believe in Gork and Mork, they were just into existence. Well, we also do need to kind of ju just a bit remember that some of the stuff may not fully be canon and it's a bit speculative. But ah. if we're correct in saying that in the uh, war in heaven created, say, Korn... It was because the sheer volume of murder, death, and destruction, like, put it all into a blender and out came the smoothie of corn. You know? <laughs> so all the orcs believed in, in the brutal but cunning and the cunning but brutal, and then out came the smoothie of Gork and Mork. Right, right. So, uh, so and with, with the volume of them, of the orcs, you know, all believing in them, and their little psychic presence yeah, adds a lot. Sure, they're all... Because every orc is kind of a psyker, right? That's a the tiniest, a little bit, tiniest yeah. little bit. Uh, so, what exactly happens to an orc when it dies? Like, what happens to an orc's soul? Because, like, they are fungus, and you could just technically be like, "Oh yeah, you died, but you can come back a thousand years later as a 
you know, because your 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 little fungus seeds are left over. Like, wh where where does wh what's an orc soul afterlife situation like? Well, we kind of learned about that in the Gaz book, um, but it's a little hard to tell because our original understanding of the orcs were that their physical form would blow up into fungus spores and then they would regrow. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, however, if we remember the book, we had Makari who died many, 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 many times. Yeah. And, and then Gaz he would kept be, reviving him, right? Well, he would be reincarnated. Yeah. Um, however, it's not quite sure if that's a Makari thing. Because, because he's of the favored the, flag bearer. And... Because it's Gaz and everything. Yeah. And, the, and Gaz has seen the prophet of Gork and Mork and you saw the the big green was like the hallucination they had. Yeah, yeah. Um, or if other orcs also have that. I, I'm going to assume not because it doesn't seem like orcs know about prior lives. Yeah, you and can't, Bakari like, most assuredly did. Yeah, Bakari absolutely did as he was recounting it. And I don't think the regular boys would know about their prior, the prior lives they lived. Yeah, that's right, because so, Makari was actively trying to get himself killed because fuck you, Gaz. Yeah, which was quite funny. Yeah, it was. Uh, which, so I'm not, I'm not 100% sure if it's a Makari thing or if it's an orc thing. Um, yeah, the orcs do believe in reincarnation as their, their concept. Mm. Especially because they blow up in the fungus and they regrow, so. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but there's if their soul, like their personality maintains, I don't know. So the um, orcs will never really meet Gork and Mork. They'll just hear little... They might hear little whispers in their head and assume that that's Gork and Mork, like Gaz did. It's hard because orcs don't give a shit, and therefore it's hard to determine. One might say that their soul is that fungus, and it's in oh, that true. fungus, and so, when, and so when they die, they don't really go to the warp because their soul sticks around in the fungus in that the they fungus, let. right, right. Or one would say that their soul does go to the warp, but the fungus is like the consciousness and they get a new soul, but that doesn't quite work. So yeah. it's still a little difficult. Um, yeah, orcs are kind of weird. Orc, they they orc are death weird. Death and orc afterlife and orc sort of pseudo religion is a little weird. Yeah, that's, that's, that's fair. It's strange. Not to mention that, well, yeah, yeah, it's harder to tell because orcs don't fucking care. They want to yeah. get a good crumpin'. Um, whereas, let's say, like a demon, a demon is a gish, like, like, like a full-on thing of warp energy. Like, like a demon of corn, like a bloodletter, for example, is just demonic energy that is existing in the material plane for a short period of time. Yeah. Which is also why they can, when they get sent back to the warp, it's assumed that, they, you know, how bad they died is how long it takes. And they're also bullied by the other demons, apparently, when they're in there. And so when they come back into the real space, they generally out because they're fucking pissed off because they want to get revenge for getting killed. Oh, yeah, yeah. Which is also often why you might hear some stories where demons might sometimes have a pact with chaos or other people because they can, they can murder a lot more people and gain more favor. Yeah. Um... Obviously, demons are not good things to have, but no. it's also why certain people like sisters can, with the will of their mind, make demons, you know, angry, upset, push them away. And it's the same reason why blanks and their null field are so good against demons, because they it's, a, it's like an anti-warp circle. Freaky ass blanks. Freaky ass blanks. This Freaky also ass uh, blanks. this also pushes us to the concept of like the Tyranids. Oh, yeah, where, the Nids. Yeah, the Nids. The Nids have one mind. They have they have a single soul. The thing is, is that oh. their 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 suck vacuum is is the size of like a gigantic just is a hole in the planet of the sea. It is a wow. a big circle of nothingness. But inside the hole is a bunch of bazillion teeth. So the demons are like, Whoa. I ain't going, I ain't going yeah, near that. Yeah, I ain't touching that. That sounds creepy. Yeah. I avoid Fuck that, that at all costs. Uh, so, also, I guess I didn't realize, well, they are a hive mind, but I didn't realize they were considered as just one one soul. So just the, the hive mind, the hive queen is the one soul. And they're all just interconnected to that because they're a hive mind? 
they are all one hive mind. And so they might have various consciousness, as we mentioned earlier, where mm. certain bugs might think on their own kind of a little bit or act as links to smaller bugs. But it is one mind. For instance, there's a little excerpt from the Devastation of Ball book where uh, when the Cicatrix Maledictum broke open after the Eye of Terror and it, or the uh, Falcadia, all of the the near Tyranids went like, "Oh my god!" And like it's in all of their little bugs like lost connection for a short period of time, mm -hmm. and some of them kind of went crazed and problematic, and a lot of them died. But it was to, you know, they like had a sever, yeah, so a, a big crack in the mind of the Nids. If not that this will ever happen because it's a completely stupid thing to ever happen and would never happen, if someone ever managed to like find the hive mind of the Tyranid, right? And they actually managed to kill this thing. Which which Chaos God would benefit the most from it, and how redonkulously strong would they get because of it? So, the question I have the most is that, is the hive mind affected over... Like, is there one specific thing... Yeah, cause I don't think it's like just just chilling. Oh, way, so it's not way out like in way. most sci-fi movies where like there's just one big gross pod that's just very well guarded and just hidden somewhere. You remember we've all played Mass Effect. Of course, remember we have. Le Le each Geth is an individual software of Geth. What made Legion so impressive is that he was a thousand Geth in one, which is why he was so intelligent. I'm imagining uh, that a lot like each individual geth is like a termagant. Bigger tyranids are, are more uh, constructs and more uh, applications of geth. In order to kill all the tyranids, you would need to kill all the tyranids. But the more uh, tyranids are there, the larger the soul. So if you were to kill a right. shitload of nids, I imagine the giant sinkhole in the middle of the ocean full of teeth would get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. And smaller. Right. Oh, that's right, because that's that's how you said the uh, what is it, the Swarm Lord kind of functions like that, where they get like uh, a bunch of consciousnesses of of Nids and you get a Swarm Lord or something. Basically, yeah, it, it's it's a large amount of the hive mind psychic power. I think Geth is the closest I can get for an example. Right. So there's not one specific like hive mind hive queen. It's just they're all just an interconnected mind. Yeah, to an extent, I think they have varying cutoffs. Like, I think each hive fleet is its own mind, because sometimes certain hive fleets don't uh, don't like each other. Um, huh. so it might be splinters of the mind. Maybe it's got schizophrenia. I don't know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, how it handles each hive fleet, I'm yeah. not quite sure. But uh, it's it's the Tyranids are not well known for obvious reasons. Yeah. Um. But either way, it's basically just imagining it as one big scary hole that everyone says, oh god, stay away from it. Stay away from the teeth. Yes, which is why the very few people to have ever looked into the Tyranid consciousness are like the highest level space marines and they almost didn't survive. Yeah. Um, last but not least, we have the Tau. Oh yeah. So the Tau, the, Tau too. the Tau don't have psychers. They will probably never have psychers. Um, how, because they have, and they also have very little knowledge of the Immaterium, like, at all. Hmm. Um, which gives them a little bit of resistance to warp powers, because, like, affecting the mind, because they don't really have I mean, any... They don't really get it, yeah. Yeah, but, oh, they don't have, like, uh, a very strong soul. Yeah. Because they, they have very, like, almost no psychic presence in the warp whatsoever. And... It says here, uh, quote, to the demon, they appear as a shifting will of the wisp rather than a burning fire that represents a human soul. So it's like yeah, airs of smoke sense. as opposed mm -hmm. to a bright light. Yeah, because if they do, if, if they don't have psychers and they don't really use any of the powers of the warp, then yeah, they would probably have very little presence in there and demons wouldn't really notice them too much. The um, They were kind of unaware of the Immaterium for a while until they conducted some research and they said, quote, The warp is no place for the greater good and is best left to those foolhardy races who cannot pull back from that terrible realm. And they would be right. Yep. They would be 100% right. Good for you, Tal. You've made the right decision. They have absolutely made the right decision. Whereas so, everybody else is kind of fucked. 
The Tau one is a little boring. They don't have as much of the anti-psychic strength as the Necrons do, utilizing Blackstone and uh, like Gloom Prisms and stuff mm -hmm. to, to stop it. But they also can't be affected by it as much because they don't really have much of a soul. So they don't in incur demons like very oh, often yeah, yeah, at yeah. all, mm -hmm. which is very handy for them because the demons just don't give a shit. Well, good for you, Tau. You, you done good. We're very proud of you, Tau. Last but, the winners this time. last but not least, I uh, I would like to um, pull out something from my uh, new Chaos Codex. Hey, I'm so hey. glad you said Chaos Codex. What were you thinking I was going to say? Well, I mean, you were just like, I'd like to pull out something from my, and I'm so glad you said new Chaos Codex. From my pants. I'm so glad you went new Chaos Codex. Oh my god. So a couple things. One, I just want to read you this relic, because it makes me laugh a lot. It's an okay. Emperor's Children relic. Oh, hell yeah. So it's the Endless Grin. This oh. fleshy mask is the still-living, flayed oh. face of a man who begged Slanesh to fulfill his wish to live forever. Oh, it is God. said the Dark Prince was only too pleased to oblige, gifting the unfortunate soul immortality, but also forcing him to present his face to the Chaos Lord Shiksei. After butchering the supplicant, Shiksei wore that face as a prize reminder of the occasion for several centuries, wallowing in the fraction of its life-sustaining properties in the process. Uh -oh. The endless grin has since changed hands many times, but the potency of its anguish has never diminished, nor the arrogance of its invigorated wearer. Holy shit. This guy's like, I want to live forever. Okay. Gets your face cut off, eternally screaming. It's like, you're living forever. Hooray! How about that, buddy? Eternal anguish. <laughs> it just made me laugh when I read that. I was like, "That's that's that's right. That sounds that, about right." That is such that is such a chaos. Re that's such a chaos slanesh relic. That's so. Oh man, that's awful. I hate it. So and I love it too, though. The last bit is the concept of I want to talk about is beseeching the dark gods, because. We think about, like, why would you ever care if a dark god, like, why would dark god ever bless or give a shit about anyone in the mortal realm? Especially, like, like, a, like why would you ever have a blessing by a dark god? Like, a single Chaos Space Marine is, is nothing compared to the great game. Mm -hmm. But whether they understand or don't care, as we said before, Chaos needs us. Yes. So, true. in the, of course, Night Lords section... <laughs> um, there is a little excerpt called The Rise to Demonhood of Veskagar, Prince of Dread, in the words of one who trembled in his shadow. Wow. So, uh, it's a bit long, but I'll, I'll read it out. It says, uh, Veskagar's night lord spent weeks hunting down the primitive citizens of Harun in the midnight hours, tossing tens of thousands of souls into the Imperium. On Harun's highest peak, Veskagar first seals his pact with the powers of the warp, a hundred gutted, gutted corpses at his feet. Upon a surge of dark inspiration, my lord Veskagar commands our allies in the cult of Boreanus Doom to divest themselves of unnecessary ornamentation. When the Night Lords attack Boreanus' capital hive, their assault is preceded by the cult's screaming mobs, not an inch of skin remaining on any of them. Oof. Veskagar learns of negotiations between the Simonus Belt Worlds and the Union of Telmark, sending his own earnest salute. Night Lord veterans steal aboard the Governor's Void Bark, whatever, where negotiations are to be recorded and broadcasted to billions of citizens. There, they release warp tainted hallucinogens and demon possessed servo automata, which hunt down and flay the maddened delegates, the last of whom break into the Governor's chamber seeking refuge. And they find the governor alive, but with skin and flesh stretched and nailed to bulkheads. Oh. Then the demon servitors reach them, and all that follows is transmitted to the hopeful worlds of the Simonus Belt. Panic grips billions, and anarchy and civil war rage. Veskagar flies into a rage after learning of the near extermination of the Grell, a Xenos conclave who supply arcane, psychotraumatic instruments. Tracking their slayers to the Watch Fortress, 
the Night Lords overwhelm the Xenos Hunting Death Watch chapter, and Vesgar slays their Watchmaster, Mortis, prizing apart his ribcage before skewering the Loyalists with his own Vigil Spear. Imperial investigators will discover every black armored corpse accounted for, yet not a single eye between them. Oh. The Grell survivors receive the gluttonous prizes with relish and tell, and tell my lord he has earned great favor with the masters beyond. And finally, the terror of the Samanus belt spreads to other systems for decades. The gods' demonic servants are summoned on a dozen worlds throughout the subsector, each location a banquet of terror for Veskagar's night lords. Imperial reprisal forces attempt to squash the anarchy, but they are too late. At the fierce spasm's height, Veskagar receives his reward from the dark gods. On Coral of Five, Veskagar dedicates the twin hearts of a loyalist Astartes captain to the dark gods. A black fire consumes him, fanned by a hurricane of whispers, and my lord screams. Those who relish Vaskagar's pains are cowed when he emerges, monstrous, shadow-winged. The iron claws of his armor are placed with demonic talons, and his face, a pit of night, with only crimson eyes and yellow fangs. Wow. So, this man basically murdered billions, sent an entire system into civil war, and let the dark gods uh, manifest on the world and take it for themselves. And in return, he became exalted into a demonhood. Oh, wow. That's a, that's a, that's a, that's a lot. Yep. He, so a... he basically became a demon prince. So that, that's how you gain the favor of the dark gods, so to hey, speak. Just, just gotta kill billions, send, uh, send, uh, send people into anarchy, civil war, uh, skin people, cut out their eyes. You know, no big deal. It's, it's, it's it sounds pretty easy to become a chaos uh, primarch prince demon exalted thing. Yeah, that sounds. It's, oh. it, it's okay. hey, listen. It's just it's the way it is. You know, you just gotta if you're gonna put in if you want the rewards, you gotta put in the effort. Yeah, you gotta put. You gotta go hard to the paint. You gotta go hard in the paint. You gotta go hard in the paint, dude. <laughs> if you want, if you want that glory. <laughs> All right. <laughs> with with that, I think it's about time we end the episode. Yeah, I think you're right. I, think you're I right. liked this one. We were on. No, we weren't on topic. We were consistent. Yeah, we were like a train wreck that somehow kept getting back on the tracks. Have you seen that video of the guy with the snow plow constantly like falling over? I have not seen that video. That that was us. That is a great one. Yes, yeah, sucked <laughs> through a warp based straw. Yeah, Shai said we consistently sucked just like the warp straw. You know what you know what's really gonna suck through that warp straw? It's trying to edit this madness, Shai. So good luck. Good luck. Good pal. good luck. Good you luck. Know, and you know what they say? Yeah, buddy. <laughs> little guys. Little, little guys. Little, little guys. Guy. Boom. Little guy.